How do I write an email with attachments? We're often asked that because people need to send us things like graphics for their website or PDFs, and menus and stuff like that. And not only us, maybe printers and designers. So how do you do it? There's different methods. I'm gonna show a problem with one method and that's particularly the phones. And that's when you actually send, now you'll get the option to share a file and potentially that is not coming up as an attachment. So if I take you to the screen, now you'll see here, there's three emails. Two's got the paper clips. That's telling me there's attachments to that. And then there's another one, which is sent via the phone. Now on screen here, if I bring this email across here, you'll see we receive this from a customer. So if you're looking to buy number pl or pr private uh, cherries plates, uh, give Sean a shout at uh, Beef Registrations. Now he sent us this. Now this doesn't show as an attachment. Now for me to actually pick up this, I've got a couple of options. Maybe I can right click and save, save us picture, but I don't know what the picture was na named. And the problem is if there's 10 or 15 of them, we've got to do this on each individual photo. There's no option to save the attachment. So what's happened here, it's actually embedded. The picture has been inserted into the email. It's not been attached to the email, it's been inserted. So imagine if you've got a piece of paper and that photograph is but literally being glued or sellotaped directly to the paper. And now it's put, for want of a better word, permanently attached to the paper, opposed to it being put in an envelope. And then we can receive that envelope and take that photo out of the envelope. And then another problem, when you send attachments, depending if you're sending it on your mobile phone, it'll also happen on your computer. It may suggest that you send it in a lower resolution so you don't use up all your bandwidth and stuff like that. And if you're sending loads of these, it may, it may suggest that because you'll go over your limits. Another problem then is we actually receive, and whoever you're sending it to, receives that image in a lower resolution. So we will receive files and somebody's taken it on their phone brilliantly, but we've received it in the smallest resolution. And now we're expected to do something, either include that in a video and stuff like that, and the resolution's too low. So what we need to do, a couple of methods. So if I move that out of the way, and I'll show you here. So this is the email sent from an iPhone. And you'll see there's two pictures there. And again, they don't show as attachments. And if I open that, bring that back into the view. And if I go to files, save attachments, you'll see this, as far as the email's concerned, there is no attachments. And again, there's loads of different email platforms out there um, with, on, on Microsoft uh, Outlook. There's countless others. Now, some behave slightly differently, but nine to ten, if you're attaching the emails, will they, uh, the assets will be able to save them out. If they're not, then they're technically embedded in the email, and there are all kinds of headaches to get that asset out. So as you can see, in this, as far as this is concerned, there's no attachments. Now, if I go to the one above, this was sent on the this is sent on the Mac and we see these attachments. If I open this and I go to file save attachments, it'll allow me to save them with whatever name they, these are not brilliantly named, but whatever name there was. So if it was a house and this is front elevation, uh, front room, back room, dining room, reception room, hall room, we know what each of those individual pictures was, which is Another important thing you need, particularly if they're going on your website, because to meet legal requirements, those pictures should be described in an alt tag of what those uh, pictures are. So if we just receive them as photo one, photo two, or we save them, or whoever's saving them if it's for your website and they don't know what they are, they're going to be struggling, which potentially down the road could be a legal issue for you because you haven't told us what those images are. And in, in, in fairness, we can't tell the world what they are. So because you don't want to rename the images, it causes problems further down the road. If you want to find out how to rename uh, your photos, uh, leave, a, leave it in the comments and I'll do separate videos on them. So if I X that, and if I go to this one as well, so this was dragged, and again, uh, this was dragged from the Mac. So those was uh, on the Mac as inserted. These were dragged. So again, I can go say, save as, and it'll give me the option to save. So if I was created a new email, I'll go new email. Again, this varies depending platform to platform. You'll have different options, either create message or create new email. So again, put the person you're sending it to the subject. Always remember to put the subject in. Then I'm going to go to insert. 
Now, I don't want to embed or insert a picture within the email. I want to attach. And again, some of the wording isn't as good as it used to be. Um, but we want to go attach. I'm going to browse the PC. So I'm going to attach that. Again, lousy naming for photos. Give that a second. Now it's attached that photo. I believe these were probably taken from uh, once they were uploaded to Facebook, then they were sent to us. Now, what you want is ideally that to be renamed to whatever it represents. But you can see that's, as, that's an attachment and it's not part of the email. And if I was to insert, now where's the option to insert? Insert pictures on this one, yeah. Insert picture. Now that's actually going to insert it within the document, within the page, which is what we don't want. Now, obviously at the end of your email, you might be inserting your logo or something like that. So if I press insert, you'll see this becomes part of the email. And then when it gets to the other end, it's in effect to kind of like semi permanently attach the email. It's probably low with the grade of the photo. Now that's one thing we don't want to do. So go for attachments, always look for your paperclip, nine to 10, that represents the attachment. So if I X out of that, the only other problem now is if you're going to send loads of them, you're going to be filling up uh, your outbox with loads of emails. So your outbox increases over time, reducing your entire mailbox uh, capabilities. And also you're just sending loads and loads of emails across the internet with loads of attachments. Best ways of doing that is to use third party tools. So, and there is free options. So if I bring this in, this is we transfer. What you do, you sign up for an account. Uh, the account, you can start off it free. Sign up, put your email, your email in, the email you're sending it to. Again, give them, you know, pictures for my new brochure if you're sending it to the printer or whatever. Give them a clue what it's about uh, and a, a bit of a message. And literally, you just drag. I might do one in it at the end of this to show you how it works. And then, literally, you just drag and drop or attach your files, your videos. You've got up to get two gig on this one. So great for sending large files, high resolution photos, videos, and stuff like that. So that's WeTransfer. I do believe you now got to sign up there just because again, people have abused it over the years. So they're going to sign up and you verify your email and stuff like that. But you can start off with a free account and you can be free forever if you don't need the pro tools. Mail, mailbigfile.com. I'll leave a list of the these URLs at the uh, end of this video. This is Mail Big File. So what you do here, again, same as we transfer, sign up for account, verify your email, and then send, put the sender's email in. Use now will probably prompt me to sign in. Again, you've got two gigs. And then you just uh, attach all your files and send it that way. Now, the other option is things like Dropbox. Here you can get an account, so you've got a virtual, hard, a virtual hard drive or a virtual space in the cloud, and you can move your assets to there and then share or give them permission to view that folder. So by doing that, again, those assets stay there. You benefit because you can access them anytime, and then you give access rights to your printer, your web designer, or whoever needs access to. So that's Dropbox. Again, there's a paid version if you want more capacity capacity we have microsoft onedrive if you have a onedrive account or if you have a microsoft uh, windows pc you get a onedrive then you can get a pro one if you need more space but everybody gets a onedrive and then you can send or create a online storage put your photos in there or your assets and stuff like that and then choose which folder it is and then give corresponding access to whoever needs it you can do the same with Google. So if you've got a Google account, you get Google Space, and you can do the same thing there, upload your assets to a folder, or it could be an individual asset if it's like a movie or something like that, or a clip, and then give them access to those uh, files. So now if 10 people needs access to that, you're not sending those things 10 times. Each of these, you're just doing it once and then give them corresponding access or permissions too. And the final one I've got here, again, you can do things, if you've got an iPhone, uh, to tap and subscribe. I'll do a video of how you can actually share those photos from your phone without needing to email them, and the person receives or has access to them in full high quality. That's photos and videos. 
And the last one in this one is Live Drive. This is a paid solution. So this is more than just sharing your files and stuff like that. You can do everything from backups to, uh, which is important. So you can back up all your assets, particularly if you, you know, uh, business photos and family photos, but all your documents and PCs and computers. But you can also create shared assets and then say, okay, I want Joe Blogs to have access to this particular folder or these particular files. So running through the online solutions for immediate transfer, you've got WeTransfer and My Big File, and you've got Live Drive, which is a combination of two uh, solutions. Online storage, so virtual hard drive spaces, you've got things like Dropbox. There's others out there as well, uh, Cloud Storage and P Cloud and uh, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, P Cloud is particularly good as well. You, we use them. So you've got Dropbox. Microsoft OneDrive and Google Drive. Those are the three well-known ones to Joe Public and stuff like that. So those are your better options. So if I show you how to use, I'll do my big file. If you want, leave us a comment and I'll potentially can do separate videos on each of these, depending on what solution you're looking into. So here's a quick demo on WeTransfer. As I said, let us know if you want to see more detailed ones. So put the person you want to send this to. So it's going to be, um, I get the bbc.co.uk I don't know a particular mic there title um pics or news and then you can either drag and drop I'm just dragging dropping and then I'll put it there and see or I can, that's that photo there or I can press the plus and attach files and browse for files or folders again another thing you can do is zip your files up and then send one zip file with multiple file uh, folders in but you don't necessarily have to do this uh, to use this and again if you need paid solutions then you can increase but most this will do most people uh, test i'm not going to send it because i don't know anybody called mike at the bbc and then you just click transfer it will then upload the assets Send them an email, so it'll send Mike, in this case at the BBC, to say you have an email with these uh, assets or attachments from this person. I will also receive an email to say, this is where those files have been put. So if I want to resend that email to them, or if I want to download them or reference, I can use that link then and ping them a personal message on, um, say, Instagram or uh, Twitter or something like that, DM them or if I wanted to share that publicly for a moment. So that's how that works. So hopefully that was helpful. Best solutions, always rename the file so it represents what it is and potentially use these tools. The worst culprit at the moment I'm, I'm seeing is the mobile phones, which just sends it as an embed in the fi uh, file. Um, in it, sorry, an embed in the email. And if video helpful, don't forget to tap subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.